At the heart of the DCC++ system is an Arduino microcontroller that has been configured and programmed to serve as an advanced, full-function DCC base station to power and control DCC-enabled model railroads. In this first series of videos regarding the DCC++ base station, we discuss some of the background theory of DCC signals and how Arduino hardware can be specifically configured to produce such signals. In a separate second series of videos on this topic, we discuss the C++ software I developed to program the Arduino to serve as a DCC base station and which I will be distributing for free under a standard open source license for anyone to use. If you are new to DCC++, you may want to first watch my overview video that more generally describes the system and all of its components. Additional videos include a four-part tour of the DCC++ graphical user interface, as well as videos demonstrating how I used DCC++ to fully automate the multi-train operations of my small but quite complex N-scale model railroad. Before we begin, a few introductory remarks are in order. First, configuring the Arduino hardware for use as a DCC base station is actually very easy. But for completeness, I am going to spend a considerable amount of time on the theory of the system for those that might be interested. If you're not, please feel free to make judicious use of the fast forward button to skip over any of the details. You don't need to know them in order to use DCC++ and I promise I won't be offended. Secondly, in designing the overall DCC++ system, my overarching goal was to maximize the use of the open source Arduino platform and minimize the need for additional discrete components such as resistors, diodes, capacitors, or transistors, and to generally avoid the need to build any custom circuitry. Whenever I had a choice between implementing a process using either hardware or software, I chose the software route. This hopefully makes DCC++ much easier for others to use and adapt. I'll leave it up to you to determine the extent to which I was successful in achieving this goal. Now it's time to dive in. Let's start with a quick review of DCC signals so you'll see exactly what we need the Arduino to be able to generate. The complete standards for DCC signals can be found on the National Model Railroad Association's website, which I have here open in my browser. If we click on Standards, and then Standards and Recommended Practices, we find the DC specifications under Sections S9. I'm not going to go through all of these documents in this video, since the whole point of DCC++ is that you don't need to know any of these nitty-gritty details. But there are a few graphics that I think are very helpful in providing context for how and why we configured the Arduino to produce DCC signals. Standard S91 provides a good illustration of a typical DCC signal as sent to the tracks of a model railroad. Note that DCC signals are designed not only to send commands to the DCC decoders in your engines, but also to provide power to those decoders so they in turn can provide power to the motors. You may already be familiar with two kinds of common ways to transmit power, through DC or AC current. With DC or direct current, a constant voltage is applied to a circuit or DC motor. In the case of a DC motor, increasing the voltage generally increases the speed and decreasing the voltage generally decreases the speed. Switching the polarity of the DC signal so that the current flows across the motor in the opposite direction usually reverses the direction the motor spins. This is how traditional model railroads have operated for years before DCC came along. With AC, or alternating current, the applied voltage is not constant, but rather oscillates in the form of a sine wave 50 to 60 times per second. The voltage starts at zero, gradually climbs to a maximum positive value, swings back to zero, then heads below zero until reaching a maximum negative value, and finally swings back again to zero where the cycle repeats indefinitely. As you can see, DCC signals, and therefore the currents produced by DCC, are neither direct or alternating type, but rather they are of a third type called bipolar. Bipolar current is partly like DC in that it maintains a constant absolute voltage, but it switches the polarity of that voltage back and forth very rapidly from a positive to a negative value. Though this may look a little like an AC signal, it is not a sine wave and the voltage does not gradually move from its maximum positive value through zero and then to its maximum negative value. Instead, it jumps very rapidly 
between its maximum positive value to its maximum negative value in the form of a square wave. These pulses ensure that the DCC decoders and the trains are always receiving a constant voltage, even if half the time the polarity is in one direction and half the time it is in the other direction. But transmitting power to the DCC decoders is not the only purpose of DCC signals. They also need to be able to transmit information so users can control those decoders. In our digital age, information is almost always stored and transmitted as binary bits, which are nothing more than a series of zeros and ones. DCC is no exception to this rule, and the standards therefore specify precisely how to use bipolar signals to encode binary bits. DCC spec S91 defines a one bit as any pulse that has a polarity flip from positive to negative in 58 microseconds, and a flip back again in another 58 microseconds for a total pulse duration of 116 microseconds. On the other hand, DCC defines a zero bit as any pulse where the polarity of the voltage flips from a positive to negative in 100 microseconds, or longer, and then back to positive again in 100 microseconds or longer for a total pulse duration of 200 microseconds. Because DCC timing for a zero bit is 100 microseconds or more, you have some leeway if each of the pulses are not exactly 100 microseconds. However, there is not a lot of leeway for the one bits. According to the spec, one bits have an error tolerance of only three microseconds, meaning that each half of a one bit pulse can only be three microseconds longer or shorter than the nominal value of 58 microseconds. Thus, if the duration of either half of one bit pulse is faster than 55 microseconds or slower than 61 microseconds, the pulse is considered bad. So there you have it. In order to use an Arduino as a DCC base station, we need to be able to produce a bipolar signal that can flip the polarity from positive to negative values in as quickly as 58 microseconds to encode a 1 bit or for 100 microseconds to encode a 0 bit. More so, the accuracy needs to be within a few microseconds. Oh, and one more thing. The voltage and current capacity both need to be great enough to provide sufficient power to a model train motor. Unfortunately, the Arduino can do none of these things. To review, our goal is to produce a DCC bipolar signal that we can connect directly to the tracks of our model railroad so that we can power both the trains and control their onboard DCC decoders. In general, bipolar signals are characterized as constant voltage pulses where the polarity of the applied voltage rapidly reverses from positive to negative so that power is always being delivered. DCC bipolar signals are further characterized by an ability to encode digital information in the form of binary 1 bits and binary 0 bits. Such encoding is done by precisely setting the length of the pulses. A pulse that is 116 microseconds long with two equal halves of 58 microseconds each represents a binary 1 bit. A pulse that is 200 microseconds long with two equal halves of 100 microseconds each represents a binary zero bit. However, there are three main reasons an Arduino by itself can't produce a proper DCC bipolar signal. First, microcontrollers by their very nature tend to produce digital signals that generally pulse between zero and some positive voltage. These square waves look a little like a DCC bipolar signal but we need signals that completely flip their polarity between a positive voltage and a negative voltage, not just between a positive voltage and zero. Otherwise, the trains would have no power during the zero voltage periods. Second, digital signals tend to be low voltage, typically 5 volts, 3.3 volts, or even lower. In order to power the engines of a model train, we need at least 15 volts, and usually even higher. Third, Model trains require a reasonable amount of current to operate. On my railroad, I need to draw at least 500 milliamps to run multiple trains. 
that the maximum current you can draw from the individual pins of typical microcontrollers is usually very small. For the Arduino, it's only about 40 milliamps. So, it looks like we can't simply connect an Arduino to our tracks and call it a day. But that's okay, because we are going to do something very clever. We are going to split the production of our DCC signal into two parts. The first part will be to produce a low voltage, low current logic signal that exactly meets all of the timing specifications that DCC standard S9.1 requires for encoding 0 bits and 1 bits. And this is something that microcontrollers, especially those used by Arduino, are very, very good at doing. In the second part, we will then somewhat magically transform our low voltage, low current DCC logic signals that contain all the zeros and one bits into a true full voltage, full current bipolar DCC signal. And this signal can indeed be connected directly to our tracks to power and control our trains. But I don't want to jump ahead too far. So let's start with the first step and see how we can use an Arduino to produce DCC logic signals.